Okay, you know, you've painted a fairly frustrating scenario for anybody trying to get the, We've got Congress, we've got big nukes pouring money into Congress, we've got laws of the land. Um, is there any way to get around this, or is this just an esoteric conversation we're having here? So the, uh, if you want to call it a thorium community, uh, we've gotten pretty creative. One very interesting way of trying to get around this is to try and get around the Nuclear Regulatory Commission which is a very daunting task, right? It's really hard if they control all of it, right? So what have, the, what have the Native Americans done in the past 30 years? Casinos, why? Because they're technically not part of the federal government. What is, so, so what an interesting idea it would be to try and build a molten salt reactor on an Indian reservation. Oh my God. We're in Blue Point, New York. Fabulous Blue Point, New York, Long Island. 40 minutes east of here is an Indian reservation. <laughs> I would love to build a nuclear reactor. <laughs> so they are a wealth of, 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 of funding, right? Because they've basically used their own non-federal status to their advantage by building casinos, right? Because Americans, people in general, like to, I don't personally gamble, but they like to, and they've been made on a lot of money. Mohegan Sun, I mean, there's any number of one in, in, here in the United States. Well, why don't we take that one step further and why don't we go talk to the Lakota or the Sioux or, or the Nez Perce? Well, why haven't you if they're only We're trying. 40 minutes away? We're trying. We're trying. I don't think anybody would go for it right there because Shoreham in a, in a Shoreham nuclear power plant is the, is the infamous example of the one nuclear power plant that was basically never turned on. Um, so I don't think we're going to get away with it here on Long Island. But... I think I personally think that's a very creative idea that the thorium community, if I can use that word, um, has come up with to try because we're trying everything we can to bring American invention and, and ingenuity back to the fore. You were speaking earlier, and I know not to ask for details because you haven't filed for your IP patents yet. But you were talking about thorium being useful, the waste product, excuse yes. me, of yeah, thorium yeah. being useful. Are we talking, without giving details, which you can't give until you get your patent, but are we talking about a situation where we, where by creating thorium-fueled molten salt reactors, we might be create, also creating a very cheap source of raw materials for entirely other industries? Yes. Because that's something I think that can bring you allies from, you know. It's, you, you, it's a great question. It's a great question. I actually have a list of 17 different molecular and isotopic streams that you can bring online, okay? 17 different types of of molecules or isotopes that you could produce. But are they things that are currently, I'm of course making this up, because, uh -huh. but that currently McDonald's pays a million dollars a pound for this secret ingredient and you can bring it out and sell it to them for 20 cents a pound because it's a, that's all I'm saying. It's one thing to create 17 different mm -hmm. things. It's quite another to say, and here's the uses. Here is what they can substitute that's a great for. Question. And that's what I'm trying to find out. Okay, so that's, a, that's an excellent question. Um, Every single thing that I'm referring to, okay, my personal list is 17, but I mean, I can come up with 10 more, okay? These are all well-established markets. Every single one of those molecules and isotopes that I'm talking about, well-established and, and this would be a less expensive source? Yes, this, would That's be, the important this is, part. This is a free marketer's dream. So what you're saying is it's, not, it's literally getting rid of the poison, which is the waste. Uh, yes. To create the other man's meat. Yeah, it uh, literally uh, is. Uh, it, it, yes. He's paying hamburger prices for filet mignon. Well, okay, so, so remember, this is free market economics. So, so whoever that purchaser is, is going to pay whatever the market is, is, is offering, right? There's the bid and the ask, right? And on the, on the stock market or the options market, there are bids and asks. So is that going to change supply and demand curves? Yes, it will. But still, is if somebody brings an MSR online and lets me and a bunch of other really, really good chemists and physicists, let me get in there and I will make you your cheap, your, your, your isotope or your molecule more cheaply, but I'm still, you're still gonna make a boatload of cash. I can give you many examples. Um, 
dimethyl ether, I can, uh, 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 medical isotopes, so like, uh, like uh, Molly 99, molybdenum 99, which, which uh, moves into technetium 99M. Um, technetium 99M uh, is used as a very, very special uh, um, uh, uh, isotope in cardiac testing. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. And we're running out of it. <laughs> And that's a really good test that they do. They, they use something called Sestamibi, and at the heart of this molecule is technetium 99 m Very special thing that pops off, and it, can, and it lights up your detector like a Christmas tree. And it gives you very, very good diagnostic information about how your heart is functioning. Well, we're running out of that. That's a problem. I can give you a list of isotopes and molecules that we could produce off, on the back of a molten salt reactor. You're still going to pay, sure, there's going to be shifts in supply-demand curves, sure, okay. But you're still going to make a boatload of money because you get a bunch of scientists like me who love this stuff. Who is the you, you and that you're still going to make a boatload of money? Who? Uh, uh, some, some Wall Street investor. I mean, I'm talking That's to... That's what I meant. The yeah. investor, the utility who's selling the Absolutely. Energy. Who? Who? Uh, Which? Uh, those are two different people. I'm pounding the pavement on Wall Street right now because I think I can get some money out of Wall Street to invest so in some of my- you're looking for venture capital. I'm looking for venture capital in a number of different ways. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I personally don't think that a monopoly or a utility is the best vehicle to go to-, to I would think bring. not. I would think not as well. Okay. Right, I mean, I, I think free market is the best way to, to make this stuff happen. I am pounding the pavement. I've got business plan after business plan. I can show you the, the mature markets. I can show you that they're going to be paying a million dollars a kilo, $50 million a kilo, $315 million a liter for these types of materials. Wow. Those are really good numbers. But why aren't you trying to raise money from some of the companies that are now paying through the nose for the materials by pointing out to them that, in fact, if they take a 5%, I'm making up my numbers here, but if yes. they take a 5% position in the company you will form to do this, you will give them a 99-year contract. Excellent question. I'm doing that right now. Okay. I, <laughs> you are a businessman. Yes, I, I, I'm, so I'm, I'm doing it in two ways. All right. I am using, so my, my colleagues and I have formed a company called Havilide. We are bringing some fabulous chemistry and we're trying to bring it to market. And we are trying to use this as a vehicle to raise more capital by monetizing that so that we can ultimately, because the molten salt reactor is the goal, okay? Um, that's number one. Number two, along the a, a, a nuclear power plant is a very special thing. A lot of the stuff in there that you need is exotic, okay? It's considered exotic, okay? They're either rare isotopes or this or that, this or that. Um, Part of the reason why I went to Los Alamos and part of the reason why I'm pounding the pavement right now very aggressively is because I would like to bring a couple of very, very valuable isotopes online. I'm just giving you one example. The lithium ion battery that you have in your cell phone and I have in my iPhone and whatever, okay? Lithium is a very boring metal, okay? It does some cool stuff, some cool chemistry inside our phones and that's cool. However, when there are two stable isotopes actually inside your cell phone right now, lithium-6 and lithium-7. Chemically, they are identical. However, their nuclear properties are very different. And, of course, there are mature markets that are clamoring for those two isotopes when they are just lithium-6 or just lithium-7. It's very difficult to separate those two. I have developed three ways in an incremental fashion in order to get the high levels of enrichment that are needed, are demanded. And they're demanded for very specific reasons and I won't go into the, the reasons why, but it's really, really hard for me to try and raise even a dime of capital because I've got the United States government in the way. <laughs> okay, for very specific reasons, they wanna control that. And for very good national security reasons, they wanna control that stuff, and that's fine. But you current, there is currently no legal way here in the United States to be able to enrich that, to, 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 to separate the six from the seven. It was banned, actually, in 2003, 2004 the, by the Department of Energy because the one trick that we were using was using mercury, mercury the metal. 
Mercury the liquid at room temperature. You can see where this is going. Mercury is dangerous. When you lose a whole bunch Mercury of Mercury the pollutant. Mercury the pollutant, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so there are, I think there are, and I, I know there are, because I've done the, the calculations, that are clever ways of bringing, bringing that online, okay? And I would love to work with the, the group that's responsible for that here in the United States at Oak Ridge National Laboratories. It's the Y12 group, right? They're charged with the national security of controlling the lithium stockpiles. They're doing a very good job, okay? I, I'd love to work with them. I actually called them. I actually spoke with them. Uh, one, of, one of the physicists came out and actually saw my talk at, you know, out in Albuquerque in February. Let's move forward. I can't raise a dime of capital on Wall Street without the, the blessing of the federal government in order to say, yes, this guy can do it. Isn't our energy secretary at the moment a nuclear scientist? Dr. Stephen Chu recently left. He's one of my heroes. Um, Nobel laureate. Dr. Ernest Moniz has taken his place. I don't think he can get involved. I don't, because it immediately gets political, unfortunately. I believe he's an MIT grad. Um, but he doesn't have to be elected to office. And that's true. He doesn't have to raise a campaign. And that's workers. true. And that's true. Those are all, those are all true. Um, I just, again, think it's politically untenable, I, unfortunately. But in what sense? Since you're saying it's all true that he does not have to raise money because from Big Nuke or from anybody else. He doesn't have to because 60% of the Department of Energy's budget comes from Big Nuclear. The Department of Energy gets paid by Big Nuclear. They get paid in the, term, in the form of fees, in application fees, licensure fees, um, taking care of all the 70,000 metric tons of, of long-term nuclear waste that we have here in the United States. Big Nuclear pays the Department of Energy. But f forgive me for being a pit bull on this one. No, I understand no, what you're saying. Rock and roll. But since what you're trying to get is authorization to do all kinds of research that would lead to new reactors, molten salt reactors, whatever, but to new reactors that would pay fees and to new transferring various kinds of fuels because you had mentioned that we could use the uranium 238 or 230. The fees are going to come in. They may come in from a different source, but Agreed. who cares? So I still, my question remains on the table. I can't answer it. It's a growth market. The Department of Energy should look at a molten salt reactor as a growth market. I guess the reason, <laughs> oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. We can take care of the nuclear waste, 70,000 metric tons of nuclear waste here in the United States. We can dissolve it. You know, good chemistry and physics. We can dissolve, we can take that nuclear waste and actually use it. I understand, but you were up until now, forgive me for interrupting. That's but, fine. But it's just on this one particular, because you've made that point. If you're saying to me that it doesn't matter that the Secretary of Energy does, isn't an elected office and doesn't need, because 60% of the Energy Department's fees are coming from Big Nuke, I still say to you, well, yes, but they can do the math. And they would be yes. getting the same number of fees, if not more, from the molten salt reactor industry, from the transportation of the waste that you're going to reuse. Agree. So I ask you again, why do you think that you're not getting buy-in from the Department of Energy where there's a nuclear scientist who allegedly understands the science. I know, I know, I, I don't know. I don't it's, know. it's not a no-brainer that it's political, that's all I'm saying. I, 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 I don't know, I don't know. I have no idea, I, I can't think of a money reason why. I honestly can't. It, molten salt reactors, I can't think of any reason. I, I don't know, I can't answer your question. I don't know why because it's a no-brainer to me. It's a no-brainer, they'd be getting fees. They be, you're right. You understand my question. I, yeah, and I don't have an answer. I, don't, I, I, wish, I, could I wish I could find an answer. I, I wish I had an answer for you. I don't. I, I don't. I don't because the, we proved that it would work. <laughs> for 20,000 straight hours, we proved that overclocking an MSR works. <laughs> They, they, they gunned it. They pushed the molten salt reactor at 800 Celsius, if, if I remember my history correctly, for over 20,000 straight hours. That's oh like God. a year and a half. Yeah. If and it didn't melt down then, we, we don't have to worry a lot. It's well, not see, three mile island. Okay, but you, you, but you bring up a great point. We're going, it's, 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 it is walk away safe, okay? It, we're going the opposite direction. If, if a molten salt reactor overheats, it shuts, it shuts itself down. Yeah. 
of all the nuclear reactors uh, and all of the accidents that have occurred on this planet since the first nuclear reactor uh, was, was opened up, commercial nuclear reactor in 1958, every single problem was as a result of cooling. Every single one, every single accident, Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, all of them were as a direct result of cooling failures. Why? Because the thermodynamic design is terrible. It sucks. I hear you. So I, 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 I don't know. Okay. I, I, I don't well, know. I want to ask you one more political question. Shoot. You've made, you've been quite deliberately non-political in this conversation in the sense of not being Democrat, Republican, Independent whatsoever. I'm now going to ask you for a political statement. Uh, I get the sense from you that the politicians have been a very bad barrier to this. Has it been more of a problem with Democratic administrations, with Republican administrations, or no difference? It's no difference. No, Why no, is no. that, though? Because they're so different on almost everything. Oh, because dollar signs are dollar signs. I think, I personally think that it's a well, myth. But I, it, it's, I, I, I am very disappointed by the American public overall because they don't see the myth. It doesn't matter, Republicans or Democrats. They only, they, they, they have their own agendas and, and both of their agendas are self-serving. They don't have, they don't have very much to do with, with trying to fix and be, and be stewards of the American people. These actions for, uh, among Democrats and Republicans alike don't serve the American public. The, 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 the nonsense with the helium reserves, that doesn't serve the American public. What I'm asking though is, do you find any kind of a partisan leaning? And what I mean by that is, yes. I'm sure you could point to a senator, or a, but is there a difference under a Democratic administration versus a, a Democratic House versus a Republican House? I'll shut up. You know my question. No, no. I, 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 and that's what I'm doing. I understand. Um, I don't, I think that there are small differences. I think Historically, Republicans have always been big business and pro-business. And I, so you're going to get pushback from the Republicans because big nuclear is, is on their side. I think you're going to get pushback from the Democrats because typically Democrats are, are more environmentally knowledgeable. And you're going to get the Sierra Club and, and, and big environmental groups pushing from, from the left, so to speak, and, and therefore pushing the Democrats. So I, I think it's a much more complex uh, a, a question. But it brings us back, because I'm looking for a scenario of how this will get funded and how it will go by law it'll get down the future. It, it, it'll get funded through free markets. And you're looking for venture capital. Uh, yes, because it will not get funded by the federal government. But let me pose a hypothetical scenario to you and you tell me what's wrong with this scenario, okay? Uh, yes, politicians certainly do respond to big business. There's no question about that. Yes. Uh, if the people in industry that you're talking to are being persuaded by data that, depending on who the business person is, that they can get process energy at a quarter of what they're paying for process energy right now, they're going to be on your side. And you go to another company and say, you know that 50 million a year you're paying for that raw material? We can provide it to you for 20 million a year. They're on your side. If you can get that many big businesses, why would they not be able to counteract Big nuke. It's a great question. I'm trying right now. I'm trying but right now. do you not think that that would have an impact on yes. Washington? Yes. Yes. Appeal to greed. Yes. Absolutely. In a nutshell, you're saying appeal to greed. I am trying to do that. Greed right. is good. Greed is good. <laughs> hey, Gordon Gecko, right? My, 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 Our hero. My, my CFO's <laughs> favorite character ever. <laughs> Gordon Gecko. It's, he's, he's my finance guy. He's, it's his favorite. Um, uh, uh, I agree. I'm trying right now. I am, I, am, I am approaching people who use lithium-6 and lithium-7. I am approaching people who use tritium because I have a, I have a prototype design where, whereby you can harvest tritium. Incidentally, tritium is used by several different in industries. Um, I'm approaching those industries right now because it's a far faster return on your investment if I go come up with a way to get this extraordinarily lucrative isotope out of your system or, or enrich it or whatever, and I don't need a nuclear power plant. Yeah, absolutely.
Okay, well, you know, you've explained a lot of the formidable obstacles that have been placed in the path, uh, be it from big, big nukes or politics. Or How can you be proactive? It is one thing to complain bitterly about what is happening to stymie the use of molten salt reactors as thorium. And it is another to talk about just fighting back against misinformation that may be coming. Right, right. But yeah. is there something that you can do proactively? Is there a way the thorium community, if I can go back to that expression, sure, sure. can lobby on its own? What can you do that is proactive? I am, like I said before, I am trying, my partners and I, we have formed a company called Havalide. We are trying to monetize that so we can get boatloads of capital. Part of the reason why we're doing this is because molten salt reactors are the goal, but we need a boatload of capital. How does anybody get stuff done in Washington, D.C.? They write checks. <laughs> they write checks to lobbying groups. There's a reason why the Financial Services Roundtable, which is the largest lo lobbying group in Washington, D.C., there's a reason why Wall Street gets so much stuff done. <laughs> because there are f slightly more than five lobbyists for every member of Congress in the Financial Services Roundtable, the largest lobbying group you know, in D.C. There's a reason why it works. It's because they keep writing checks. Okay, but you don't have that. We don't have the money. So what are you doing in order to lobby as well? I am you have the creativity. I, yes, so what I are you am, doing? I'm specifically trying to start this company to, so, so that we as, as the science group, the chemists and the physicists that, 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 uh, uh, that are involved in have a lot of, like. Uh, are these all American? Yes. Scientists. Yes. Because we were talking about an international thorium community, but this is America. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Ahead. And so, so those chemists and I, we are trying, we are starting this company and we are trying to get this company going um, because we can, we can do some really neat chemistry that has nothing to do with nuclear. We, can, we believe we can monetize that, that chemistry. That really, it's very, very interesting chemistry. Okay. We believe we can monetize that. We already have our exit strategy written out. We, would, we want to walk away with, with a fair amount of capital and start writing checks because that's how business gets done in Washington, D.C. You pay lobbyists, you pay the lobbying groups, you ultimately get What access. is your projected timetable? All depends on the money. Uh, our projected exit, exit strategy is 40 months from now. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, if everything goes well, we'll go even faster. Right. If we you raise the, the head three and a third years. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, um, I am trying. I'm going in front of uh, uh, a, a lot of people in the next couple of weeks to try and raise the the, the startup capital. We've raised for Havilide. For Havilide. Yes, for Havilide. And I am working my butt off to try and do it, but with the much further reaching goal of of it being, let's monetize this. Let's make our investors and shareholders a whole boatload of cash. But we as the scientists, we want the prize. We, we love the chemistry, we love the physics, we love the thermodynamics of, of molten salt. So ultimately, down the road, we want to get there. But the only way to get there is to do business just like everybody else does in Washington, D.C. You write checks. <laughs> we don't have the money. The thorium community doesn't have the money. And you have, you have, have older guard who still believe that it, Washington doesn't work that way. And Washington does work that way. That's precisely how they work. You write checks. And we don't have any money. I mean, we, we have a lot of passion. You could probably tell. Um, <laughs> but we don't have any money. And so that's how you get stuff done. How did the, the, the Native Americans get all of their casinos? They wrote checks. You know, they, they wrote checks. And so now you, you, you got a lot of stuff done. <laughs> We also have a new batch of billionaires in this country. We do. And have you thought of maybe getting an angel type of thing? I, I, I'm trying right now. Okay, uh, I won't ask who because even I don't think I can elicit that information. Right. Unless you'd like to tell us. <laughs> Suffice to say, the, 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 I guess the famous billionaires that you could probably think of, um, I've already approached two of them. I'm trying to approach a third, but he's involved in another type of energy tech. And if you Google, you could probably figure out who that is. Um, now, the, the two that you approached, they said no, or you? It's tough to get in touch with them. I spoke with one, and but again, it comes back to the same uh, uh, story. It will not be done on American soil with the current laws that are in place. It will not. Now, there are much friendlier environments, okay? 
Canada is one of them. Um, David LeBlanc is an outstanding physicist, and he's trying to make stuff happen in Canada right now. And it is. Have ahead. you thought of doing that as well? Of course. Okay, because I mean, the objections you were having about China, I don't think apply to Canada. That's true. So what I'm saying is, I is that a realistic scenario? It's a very realistic scenario, except I don't want to go to prison. <laughs> I was told in no uncertain terms by the Department of Energy that if I bring any of my intellectual property off of United States soil that represents a national security threat, I will get thrown into prison. They told me over the phone. <laughs> I know who they are. <laughs> I'm not going to name them. Did you check caller ID? You sure what this <laughs> No, I mean, I, I, I know who the, the, the guys and girls are. There were, I, 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 you know, and I was very interested in speaking with the woman because the woman said, oh, wait, but there is a way to actually do it. And of course there is. You know, you go through export control licensure. You go through the State Department, and she's part of the State Department. I'm happy to do it. And then I got nowhere. You know, so, so yeah, you're right. I, we are going to be left behind. We being the United States. Correct. I like America. <laughs> For all of its faults, I still like it a lot. I am an American. My kids are Americans. I like it here. It's nice. I want to stay. But I don't seem to be allowed to be doing that. I'm not giving the being given the opportunity to do that. And there are lots of countries. China, you mentioned. Canada. Germany, the Czech Republic, they're all going ahead of us. Dr. Jan Ulich is running a, 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 an excellent institute inside Prague, okay, in the Czech Republic. I think the actual name of the town is Res. He just got a huge amount of a very special salt called Flob. A huge amount. Flob? Flob. Flive, flive. It's a, it's, it's an, it, no, it's a, it's a, it's shorthand for uh, lithium fluoride, beryllium difluoride, in a very special ratio. Um, he just got thousands of kilos of this stuff, highly enriched. He basically got it for free from the United States government. They gave it away. It's like, duh, just, yeah, <laughs> duh, right, exactly, duh. It's killing me <laughs> that we just gave it away. And that we're not being permitted to do the research here. We're literally not being permitted to do the research here. They just gave it away. The, the, the other interviewer before and stuff uh, mentioned that there's a, there's a, they want to destroy the uranium-233. We actually have a very special isotope of uranium called uranium-233. It is as a direct result of thorium. And they want to destroy it. <laughs> and the people in the thorium community are like, what are you doing? Don't do that. It's very rare, it's a very rare isotope of, uh, of uranium and, and it is very, very useful and it's, it's very cool for a number of different reasons. Not just as a cool fissile isotope, okay? There's a number of different uh, technical reasons why it's, it's very interesting. And they're about to destroy it. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Stop this. Okay, one of the things I'm interested in here is, you know, you've mentioned a number of times that there are things that you can't mention to us because it's patent pending or you haven't thought. I'm sure you are not, you as Dr. Boyd, are not the only person who has got intellectual property in his or her mind. That's true. Or Pat. So coming back again, when we talk about a united thorium community, I would imagine that you and several of the other prominent scientists, I would ask you to name them because I don't, are competitors and sure. are also racing. So can you address that a little bit of where competition plays within this community sure. and who some of the researchers are? That's the spirit of competition. That's the spirit of free market economics. There's nothing wrong with competition, particularly at, the, at this juncture. Why? Because you're talking about the entire planet, seven point something billion people of market share, okay? So there's plenty of room for competition. There, there are innumerable ways in which companies can collaborate. Each one has, each company has its own strengths. Um, those strengths can be manipulated and fashioned into operating agreements, into MOUs, into all sorts of different ways in which two people or two entities can collaborate in some sort of joint venture fashion. Sure. What's an MOU? Uh, a memorandum, memorandum of understanding. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, that said. I, am, I speak regularly with, with Dr. David LeBlanc, okay? We're trying to put something together. 
that will, will make every, every, everybody happy. That's great. That's awesome. We can join forces. Okay, but does Dr. David LeBlanc have his own company, just Absolutely. like you're going to have Avalai? Yes. So is it the two companies that are doing a joint venture? There's, sure. There, we, we're not doing it yet. Okay, we're not doing it. But when you we would, I would, it, like would it be a joint venture between your company and his company? Sure, in some fashion. They, okay. That's a purely business question. You can put any number of, of vehicles in place to make that business happen. Absolutely. Um, He's a fabulous physicist. He's got some really strong uh, guys, and there's all sorts of great political landscape in the North, in Canada, to be able to make it happen. Um, I would love to see it happen. Um, he's got some great ideas. I think my team and I, we have some great ideas. I think it would work. Chemistry and physics have to work together in this case because, as Alvin Weinberg said, a molten salt reactor is one big chemistry plant. and. I think, I think that's the quote from his, his memoir, and, but it's true. And so I think it's, it's just, it just would work really well. Okay. And so, so yeah, so there's, uh, uh, Kirk Sorensen is another, and he's got, he's got Flyb Energy. Um, I personally don't share his, the, 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 uh, the uh, vision that he may have, um, but that's okay. That's fine. You know, that's the spirit of competition. So we'll see what happens. And your website Chemistry is www.haveali.com. <laughs> Actually, and my email address is there. The, the, so, okay, so, so uh, the Weinberg Foundation is, is a foundation based out of the UK. Um, they are proponents of uh, thorium and molten salt reactors. I actually guest blogged on that. Um, what, you haven't forgotten anything. I want to get the message out to every, whoever was gonna watch this. Go teach yourself some chemistry. Break out, dust off your chemistry book, dust off your physics book. It's it just, it's not as scary as you think. Particularly if you realize that at the end of the day, humans were doing it under very specific circumstances. And we can go look back in history and we can say, okay, this is the cool stuff and this is the screw ups, okay? And so now we can make cooler stuff. And now we can, and everybody can make money. And, and you know, free markets and everything, rock and roll, like, yay. Let's let's just go do it. Let's just go do it. <laughs>